The Apostle Paul wrote those words to Timothy. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. But we're going to take a step back. Who is Paul? He was not one of the original 12 disciples, but he was called by Jesus after the resurrection. The first book of Timothy is one of three final letters that Paul wrote. First Timothy has the most explicit instructions in regards to church leadership and organization out of the whole entire Bible. And these letters were written to Timothy, a young pastor. Yes, that is correct. An apostle of Jesus chose a young pastor to give the instructions for how to structure the church. Paul didn't write these letters to another apostle. He didn't write them to the elders already in the church. He chose someone young, someone with new and fresh ideas, someone who probably didn't know it all or have a lot of experience and someone who faced a lot of struggles just because of his age. Timothy was chosen for a reason. Paul had a purpose in selecting him for these letters, and yet the church couldn't accept him because of his age. Adults who are criticized for their older age like to claim that age is just a number and that it doesn't define their ability. So if that is true, then why does it apply for the opposite side of the spectrum. Why is 11 or 14, 19 or even 25 not just a number? Why does it define what role you can play in the church? Paul told Timothy to not let anyone look down on him because he was young, but to be an example. To be an example in his speech, in his conduct, in his love, in his faith, and in his purity. Paul chose Timothy, and he knew that he could be an example for all believers in these aspects because Timothy was blessed with spiritual gifts from God. The scripture that Garrett read continues on to say, Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. Timothy had very specific spiritual gifts that made him the perfect candidate to receive information that is impacting you at this very moment. Timothy was entrusted with the appropriate conduct in worship gatherings, the qualifications of elders and deacons, and the proper order of church discipline. Those are all things that we take very seriously today. And they were all entrusted to a young pastor. It is very mind-boggling for me because our modern-day versions of these things, like the Book of Discipline, are not things that young people can easily get their hands on. The information within the pages of the Book of Discipline are not openly shared, nor is it followed in regards to youth. Why, in this day and age of constant social progression, is the church thousands of years behind and something that the Apostle Paul knew was necessary so long ago? Paul chose Timothy because of his age. Paul very specifically chose someone young. There was a method to his madness, I promise. And I'm sure that Paul knew how hard it would be for Timothy, how unlikely people would be to accept Timothy's word, but he chose him anyway. Just think about it for a minute. What would have happened to the church if Paul had picked one of the elders? Paul could have given the elders all the information on how to form the church, and would that church have been formed? No, it would not have. Paul picked someone with gifts. He picked someone with time. He picked someone with room to grow and to learn. He picked someone who would see it through. He picked someone with energy and vigor. Someone who was willing to change. Someone who was willing to fight against his oppressors. And someone who was not already molded. He picked someone young for a reason. And although Timothy obviously didn't have it all together at his young age, he was willing and he learned as he went. Why can't we view our youth that way? Why can't we acknowledge their gifts and teach them to form the church that will be here when we are no longer here? 
You can ask any of our youth that are here up front today um, at the beginning of the year. We took surveys to find our spiritual gifts. Each and every one of them has a spiritual gift. There was no survey that came up with nothing. They are all different, and they may shine through in different capacities, but each youth is gifted. Why? Because God intends to use each of us. He has a lot of work that needs to be done on earth, and he creates disciples for a reason. But then the church gets involved in his work, and they dictate who is able. And they typically decide that the youth are unable because of a number. Instead of being like Paul and encouraging Timothy to serve in a capacity that meets the abilities that he currently had, the church just says no, maybe later. The church has been doing it to me for years, and as much as I have tried to be the example anyways, it is hard and it's very discouraging. I had my own version of a Paul, and he left. And I'm not the perfect Christian that kept up fighting anyways. So instead, I became Paul, and I recruited a, gift, a group of Timothys that I know will change the world someday. I lead youth group because I know what it feels like to be a young person in the church with gifts that no one wants to use. I don't want any of my youth group to feel that they are unworthy just because of their age. I want them to know that God will use them right where they are at, and that God might not use them right now, but years down the road, they could be used. And if I didn't take the time to prepare them now, then how can I expect them to know what to do in the future? The same goes for the church. We are so concerned about making the elders happy. But what about our children's and youth programs? What about setting a foundation for our youth? What about teaching them what the church is and how they can sustain it in the future? Why are we not concerned that the youth are not here, that they do not have a voice? When someday, probably a lot sooner than we all might like, the youth will be all that's left. And guess what? They won't be here either. Yes, I am sure if they fought and fought for a voice that someone would give in eventually, but we are at the point where our youth don't even know that that is an option for them. Where our youth just have no interest in being involved in church at all because there is no space for them. No consideration of their needs and wants. There is no adaptations to newer ways of doing things. I'm sorry, but appeasing to older generations is not ensuring our future. And if you all want to be set in your ways because they are so important, you are losing the chance to teach those ways to the people who can carry them on. Timothy eventually did get through, and he did great work for the Lord. My challenge to all the adults out there is to be more like Paul, and to be more open to the fact that it is your responsibility to ensure the future of our church, even if it means passing the torch before your time is really up. And my challenge to all the youth and even the younger kids that are out there today, be more like Timothy. Be an example to the believers. Per persevere even when others are looking down on you. I know that each and every one of you has a God-given gift, and I promise that God will use you in his time. I encourage you to find a place that is open and willing to grow in your faith alongside you. And do not feel stuck in a place that does not see you as an equal member of the body of Christ. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by our creator. You will do great things. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you.